today on an all-new Dr. Phil. She thought she summoned aliens. You say you saw a half-cat creature and a six-foot-tall creature with black eyes. Yes. Now she believes she is being electronically targeted. You say they can project a hologram in your eye. They do it from, like, a light behind you, and it goes through your head and through the optic nerve. It'll make you see anything that they want you to see. Tell me who they are. Let's do it. Not a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. ago, Debbie and her husband Tony were living a normal life with their young son. Then, one evening after watching a documentary about aliens, Debbie decided she would go outside and try and see a UFO. Now, Debbie says not only was she able to summon multiple UFOs, she claims she began seeing aliens and hybrid animal alien creatures in her home. Now, her husband, Tony, says he thought she was going crazy. And when she wouldn't stop talking about lizard people, he checked her into a mental hospital. Now, Debbie says she believes that she is being electronically harassed by people who shock her with electricity and put a hologram in her optic nerve so she thinks she's seeing aliens. Take a look. About three years ago, I started seeing lights in the sky. And then I started seeing alien beings. One time they were having a bonfire. They would sit on people's porches. They even had like this thing that they jetted around in, like a backpack. Little kid aliens. I started seeing scratches on my side table and the walls cracking and stuff. They were trying to make me believe that there was these two little alien kids running around my house tearing stuff up. I would see dozens of alien creatures having a party, having fun, doing their own thing. At first I thought it was real. I was just floored, really, but it was exciting. After a while, reality stepped in and I realized someone's messing with me. The harassers were using holograms, messing with my optic nerve to make me see things. I knew I was being electronically harassed to see aliens. It moved to the electronic shocking sensations. I was doing dishes one day and I felt this huge electrical shock on my left side. It brought me to my knees and it, it, it hurt really bad. So of course, got on my phone and started searching alien, electrical shock. They could shock you, they torture you. I realized that it's not gonna go away. I have smart skin from the targeting. The fungus on your skin makes your body act like a battery. You feel charged up, like they're charging you up to better target you. I started doing the cleansing routine. I spend two hours in the bathtub soaking and scrubbing the stuff off of me every day. They build my body up with electricity because I can actually feel it, especially in my home. I just tried to cover any kind of hole coming into my home. I put foil over it to try and protect myself. I cover the outlets. I used to cover the lamps. I used to put a blanket over these doors for protection. I found a creative way to put fake snow on it. That keeps me content. Trying to keep the stalkers away has consumed my life. When I try to talk to my husband about it, he just kind of blows it off and act like it, it's not happening. In the past, my husband and I have argued about this because I would try to go to him and talk to him about it. He just wanted it all go away and live in La La Land. Well, that wasn't the case for me because I was living it. I'm the one being torn. Richard. Why would anybody want to do this to you? I mean, are you of some no, importance nobody, that we don't know about? Nope, I'm nobody famous. I, I'm a housewife with three boys, and no, I'm just ordinary person. I don't know why, and that's the big question that everybody asks themselves, why me? But I think, I don't know, that's kind of why I'm here, just to figure this out. It started that um, we just... 
I was never interested in aliens, UFOs, <clears throat> my entire life. Never thought about it, whatever. Right. Um, we watched a Netflix show, and it just got me thinking, oh, that's in kind of interesting, you know. So then I started just looking at YouTube stuff just to, just for fun, you know, just, is this really true? Do we really have extraterrestrials in, you know, in the universe? You know, just this sort of thing. And um, I ran across this guy. He goes around the world, basically, summonsing down UFOs. And he says, well, anybody can do it. All you have to do is have an open mind, open heart, look up in the sky, and think to yourself, please come down. So I was like, okay, okay, whatever. So just joking, you know, I, I, I would do that. I would go outside and I would look up in the sky and I would do that. And then about three or four times after thinking that to myself, I started seeing stuff in the sky. Okay, well, let's start thinking through some of this stuff. Because I, I want to start challenging everything. Okay. Okay, would you consider yourself suggestible? Uh, yeah. Okay, so you didn't see them before. Right. You only saw them after somebody suggested to you to start thinking about mm -hmm. them. And then somebody suggested to you, just go outside, be an open mind, look up in the sky, be open-hearted, look long enough, and you'll see something. Mm -hmm. And you're suggestible, and you went outside, looked up in the sky, had an open heart, had an open mind, and you, you believe yeah. that you saw something. Yeah. And, and it's this guy that told you this, he goes around the world and talks about this. And so that makes him credible because he's like a world expert, right? <laughs> But has, have you ever seen him in Italy, Moscow, no. Alaska, no. Spain, <laughs> no. Africa? No, nope. I've never told seen you him in my has. life except one He may have he never did. been out of his grandmother's basement, but that's what he told that you. That can be true, yeah. Now, you, you have a photo that you say is of an alien. It looks like something weird to me. I mean, that's right by my front door. I had tons and tons and tons of photos, but... I got scared at one point and deleted them all, and we couldn't find them. You say that you had pictures and of hybrid people, and you mm -hmm. you had one of a of a alien, a young alien girl, uh, wearing a skirt and dark hair, you know, yeah. kind of small. But you don't have that picture anymore. No, and I wish there was somehow we could go back into my phone and have an expert. What, get all those. It looks something like this. No, that the lady does not look like that. No, not at all. Where is the alien here? Left, right? Um, like, you see that light uh -huh. thing on the bottom? Right. That's that. That's like by the hand. Uh huh. And the head is up. You say you saw a half cat creature and a six-foot <laughs> yeah. tall creature with black eyes. Yeah. 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 Okay, you have a story within a story. There's tons of aspects to this. Yeah, you you have a story one. within a story because you believed all of that was absolutely true, mm -hmm. but now you believe you were just being tricked into believing that was true. Yes. You believe now what? I just believe that somehow I'm, I mean, I don't know the terms or anything of exactly how they do it, but it's microwave torture, it's um, satellites, cell phone towers, it's electronic harassment, it's gang stalking. So you realize that they weren't real and that they had actually somehow they, and we'll talk about who they yeah. is in a minute, um, but you say they had installed something where they can project a hologram mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in your eye. Well, I, from my understanding, and I'm not an expert, so, you know, I'm not going to get it perfect, but they do it somehow from, like, a light behind you, and it goes through your head and through the optic nerve, and it, it'll make you see anything that they want you to see. Okay. I believe that's how it's done, or it's some kind of brain mapping, mind mapping. Okay, have you ever seen this technology demonstrated? Um, I've seen pictures of some of the uh, weapons and stuff that they use, but I've no, never seen it No, but I mean, you say that they shoot a light through the back of your head through some device that projects a hologram mm -hmm. so you can see whatever you see. I've just have seen Have you ever charts. seen that demonstrated? Not in person. You've experienced it, you mm -hmm. think, but n no one else you've, you've seen this happen with. 
No, I know no one that's gone through this. Okay, personally. so out of the billions of people in the world, you're the only one that you know to have experienced it specifically. Uh, well, no. I mean, there's a lot of people that have the same story as me. Well, that's, I mean, I'm talking about a story. You can tell a story. We can tell either the story that I have hair, but I don't. <laughs> you can, but you're, you're just talking about you've never seen this. I've never seen this, no. Okay. No. All right, now Debbie says that to rid herself of fungus, she bathes in Epsom salts for two hours a day to rid herself of that. And she says that this process is the only reason that she's still alive today Otherwise, this electronic force, these fields, these shocks, would have certainly electrocuted her, would have killed her. Debbie's husband, Tony, admits he once saw a UFO with his wife, but he says the difference is that he didn't, he didn't become all consumed by it. So we're going to meet him after the break and see what he has to say. We'll be right back. My wife started saying they are trying to get to her. She can't explain who they are. I came home and she's like wrapped in a mercy survival blanket. This behavior is destroying our relationship. And later, define for me the term gang stalking. People that are hired to harass you. How do they win? They want you to commit suicide. Um, or die of a heart attack from the electronic torture. I spend two hours in the bathtub soaking and scrubbing this stuff off of me every day. The more the smart skin and the fungi on your skin, the less you detox your body and exfoliate, the more it's going to build up. I use Epsom salts. I soak in the bath with those at least 20 minutes. Borax, and sometimes I do a little bit of Clorox bleach. It helps get that off. When I started taking the salt baths and cleansing my body, I still felt the shock, but it wasn't nearly as bad as what it was the first time. Now, Debbie says she believes that she is being electronically harassed and gang stalked by vicious people whose only objective is to drive her crazy. It all began when she says she summoned a UFO where she thought she did at the time. She now doesn't believe that's what happened. Now her husband Tony says he's worried about his wife's mental state but admits he's seen a few strange things as well. So which is it? My wife is paranoid. She's seeing things. She started saying they are trying to get to her, saying they are doing things. She can't explain who they are. She sees something on the internet, then that's what's happening to her. So at first, Debbie said she was seeing lights in the sky, aliens. I believe there's one or two times I've seen something that's very questionable. I would see a airplane, and she would claim that it was a UFO. But one time, Debbie texted me at work at 3 a.m. how I need to get home right now. It was an emergency. She was claiming to see aliens on the front porch and across the street. She was having an episode. They are looking at me. They are on the porch. They won't leave me alone. They're following me. They want something from me. After that, she would record things and then play them back in slow motion, pick things out. Oh, did you see that? She'd get upset with me because I'm not seeing what she's seeing. She went from saying that she was seeing aliens to electronic harassment is what she called it. She had the electrical panel open, trying to pull wires out because they were trying to get to her through the electric. I was upset with her. You could not only kill yourself doing something like that, but you can, you can burn the house up. I come home from work, there's a blanket covering the front door. I usually pull that down, go into the bathroom, take the pillowcases off the light fixtures. And also, she'll have certain vents in the house to be covered up. So I came home and she's like wrapped in a mercy survival blanket. If you're having a horrible day and they're super targeting you, you're going to do whatever you can to get away from it. This behavior is destroying our relationship. It's kind of like we basically coexist. I love my wife. I have no plans on leaving her. I believe she has sickness going on mentally. So we're going to figure it out. Well, thank you for being here. You, this is creating problems between you and your wife, right? Because yeah, you, you, you just don't talk about it anymore. Right. In the beginning, when this all started, 
it's kind of like, you, you know, we watch this show, there's, you know, a lot of, I guess, points that could be argued if they were true or false. And uh, we kind of just thought it was, you know, kind of neat to think about that because, you know, the universe is pretty big. And uh, it was just, I don't know, more or less started out as kind of like just being a hangout and do this before I go to work thing. Sure. Um, now, you say that Debbie believes that people are electronically surveilling her through her second skin. Yes. And That's what she tells me. Right. And do you believe that? No, I don't. Okay. It's hard for me to believe that. Right? And that she stopped going outside and that believes that birds and planes are following along, that if she's driving down the street and there's a plane overhead that's going the same direction, that she'll interpret that as tracking her. Yes. yes. So she'll personalize that. Yes. Tell me this, how do you know or what caused you to believe it was following you? Because... Because that's kind of egotistical, actually. I don't know why this is happening to me. I don't. I'm nobody special. I'm not trying to be anybody special, and I don't want to be anybody special. I just see what I see. You know there are tens of thousands of flights every day. And the chance yeah, that, that one of them like is going to be going the same way that you're going at any given time it's is about 100%. It's not an airplane, and it's not way up in the sky. It's, I know how they do it now, so I know it's not true. They can okay. go off the telephone lines or anything that they can tap into and project it, okay? So if there's like a telephone pole outside of the grocery store, it can be projected straight up for me to see. I see. So, so you don't actually believe no, that there is an airplane not. following No, I don't. I mean, there was a time that I did, but I okay. don't now because okay. I know how it works. All right. And the fact that you were so wrong about that then, mm -hmm. does that cause you to believe that you could really be wrong now? Yeah, but the thing of it is, is that it's a whole mind game is what they play. You say that the YouTube videos have told you not to see a mental health professional, not to yeah. see a psychiatrist, yeah. to stay away from those kinds of yes. people because they will tell you that you're a schizophrenic. Yeah, this program is made to look like you are schizophrenic, discredit you, and um, basically make you look like you're you're crazy and it does a very good job at that because it's so hard to prove that you're being microwave uh, tortured with these things okay, but then why are you here I'm not a plumber <laughs> because you have the resources and the platform to get specialists that are specializing in these types of things to check it so it's me versus the youtubers <laughs> well, no, not the YouTubers. I have talked to a man who has a radio show. Um, he's uh, like a minister, and he um, specializes in this. This being? Electronical harassment. You've talked to him? Yes, a couple of times. Uh, can I ask a question? Is that the one that was asking for money before he no. would talk to you? No. <laughs> No, that's not the one. Debbie says that she does whatever necessary to protect herself from electronic harassers, including taking, you know, two-hour baths, sometimes scrubbing herself, you know, nearly raw, cleaning for nine hours a day in her house. And here's something that you need to understand. Perception is reality. So if she believes this to be true, then for her, that is her reality. Um, and we're going to talk about that when we come back. There's some kind of like smart dust. It's brownish yellow on my appliances, on my walls, on my floors. She'll clean up to five hours a day, if not more. This is the yellow substance. How is this getting in my house? And later... No, I don't need anybody's validation. 
once you are a target and they have you brain map, they can do whatever they want to you. Sleep deprivation is a big part of this program. I've never had any trouble sleeping. My son's never had any trouble sleeping. And my son's with me 24-7. So he started staying up till 4 or 5 in the morning. I started staying up to 4 or 5 in the morning, sometimes not going to bed at all. I heard that they can make you sleep deprived because they can irritate you better when you're sleep deprived and confuse you. Debbie says her visions of aliens have diminished slightly, but now she must take extraordinary measures to combat electric shocks, gang stalking, and even extreme weather. Take a look. 100% I believe I'm a target. I know how crazy it sounds because it's designed to look like that, but if you research it, it's out there and it's happening to people. I got rid of the internet for a while. Everything that she reads or hears about on the internet, YouTube videos is a big one. And next thing you know, it's like that's what's in her head. When I started finally catching on that this is somebody definitely messing with me, they would start to do other things like the actual gang stalking. Debbie would think that airplanes and birds and things like that were following her. She would see an airplane in the sky and it happened be going the same direction she was going, then it was actually sent to follow her. One time I was followed to church. I went over to my usual parking spot and got out of my car and they just rolled down their window and looked at me and I went and just waved at them because I knew what they were doing. They were there to harass me. There's some kind of like smart dust. It's brownish yellow on my appliances, on my walls, on my floors. And I could mop my floor, come back 10 minutes, mop it again, and there it is again. I don't know how they're getting it in my house. I imagine through vents or lights or any way they can. There's this strange yellow stuff here, right here, it's right there on the lint trap. She'll clean up to five hours a day, if not more. She'll use like Clorox wipes and regular household cleaners. I clean my house like crazy and it's not there and then it's there. This is the yellow substance that is all over my walls, my floors, my appliances. How is this getting in my house? She was taking the Clorox wipes and wiping the wall and telling me, look at this, why is this color coming off? Well, in my mind, I'm thinking, if you're taking a product that's a Clorox bleach and putting it on paint, something's going to come off. Tell me um, who they are. I don't know. I don't know who they are. That's just kind of what I say, just to explain stuff. Define for me the term gang stalking. It's people that are hired to harass you. Okay. It's, you and know, what's their ultimate goal? Just to make your life a living hell. What, what do they do to win? Where's um, the goal line? I think a lot of it, I've heard that they want you to commit suicide uh -huh. um, or die of a heart attack from the electronic torture. Now, um, you've said some things that seem kind of contradictory to me, and I, I want to clarify those so I know exactly where you stand and exactly what messages mm -hmm. you're giving her. So if there's any confusion, we can clear it up. Okay. Um, you said, I believe this is a mental illness. This is all in her mind, right? That, yes. That's your belief. Yet, you say, you're open to the idea electronic harassment is real. I believe that she has something going on mental. Okay, so this, this is contradictory then. I guess... Uh, with the uh, open to the idea of electronic harassment is real is uh, kind of based on, I guess, the community of people that are, I guess, dealing with this that she showed me on the internet. But it's, I can't wrap my mind around it. So it doesn't, that's, I believe it's a mental issue. These things suggest that, you know, what if it's real? Who could be doing this? You're open to the idea. But you, you, have to, you have to understand that if you, peace at any price is no peace at all. And if you, if you kind of 
drift over and say, well, you know, I guess it could be. There are group of people that think they've been abducted by aliens and right. are back now waiting for the return of the mothership. That doesn't right. mean that happened. It just means the group of people think that. Yes. She would have discussions with me about, you know, what was going on with her. And at first I would get angry, you know, and uh, get upset with her, tell her, you know, I've used words, you know, you're crazy, things like that. Um, well, that's a frustrated. derogatory term. And, yeah. And I certainly don't oh, think no. you're crazy. I think that's a derogatory right. term, and yeah. I don't think that's true. And Next, Debbie asked me to send a specialist to her home to measure radio and scalar waves to prove everyone that she is really being electronically harassed. I didn't do that. Um, I'm going to tell you why after the break. We'll be right back. The simplest explanation is oftentimes the best explanation. But I'm not the only person that's seen things. You're the only person I'm worried about right now. My wife was admitted to the hospital for observation for 72 hours. She started talking about aliens, how they were trying to get to her. They were going to get to our son. She was showing signs of causing harm to herself or others. She was diagnosed with acute schizoaffective. This program is made to look like you're schizophrenic because everybody's like, well, I don't see anything. I don't feel anything. It's made to look crazy because they want to discredit you. <laughs> they want you to look crazy. They want you to get locked up in the loony bin. You're using the word crazy, and you're using it just as slang, as summary term, and, and I understand that, but the reason I say I think it's a derogatory term is because I think it pulls for judgment, and to me, having a mental illness is no different than any other illness. I mean, it's no different right. than having diabetes or arthritis or mm -hmm. uh, liver disease or anything else. It's just a, it's a disorder, a, an illness, a disease that needs to be treated just like anything else, mm -hmm. but it... Um, <laughs> It's, it shouldn't have a stigma attached to it. It shouldn't have uh, judgment attached. And it's nothing that you should be ashamed of. If, yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, I mean, no. I mean, I don't have any problem. If I have a mental illness and this is what it is, hallelujah, praise the Lord, because I hope that's what this is. And what diagnosis have you been given? I have no idea. I was never told anything. Mm -hmm. And what diagnosis did you understand? Uh, acute um, schizoaffective is what the uh -huh. psychiatrist at the hospital right. told me. And you've been on Suboxone for how long? Four and a half years, maybe? Four and a half years? Yeah. Uh -huh. Not a big fan. Yeah, of, I'm not either. Of being <laughs> on Suboxone for a long period of time, and I'll tell you why. It's kind of a replacement mm -hmm. drug. I mean, it, it does... He it, it, what it accomplishes is that you're not taking opioids. Right. And side effects of Suboxone, as you can see here, dizziness, fainting, drowsiness, confusion. This is probably 25%. There are many, many more. I just listed the ones that could contribute to cognitive confusion impairment here. It can have an effect on the way your your brain functions and uh, you know the way I approach these things I you know I can't diagnose you sitting here in a, a few minutes mm -hmm. but I did practice for a long time and I always went through uh, a differential diagnostic process I started eliminating things and then whatever was left is what I dealt with and I always started with a scientific principle just called Occam's Razor. And um, when I talk about Occam's Razor, I'm talking about the scientific principle that says that the simplest explanation of a phenomenon is more often best. I mean, if you, if you, if you look at something, you're trying to figure out what explains this phenomenon, the simplest explanation is oftentimes the best explanation. No, I understand what you're saying, but I'm not the only person that's seen things that are weird. You're the only person that's here, and you're the only person I'm worried about right now. What other people talk about and say, you don't know anything about no, those I people. No, I mean, that have been with me. My niece has seen things. 
He's your niece isn't things. here. You can't speak for your niece. And, and I can't cross-examine your niece and ask her questions. I can't test her reality. I can't examine her history. You don't need her to validate you. No, I, I'm, no, no. You don't, so don't, tell, don't talk to me about somebody that isn't here. I'm just saying that, you know, if you're trying to label this as a mental illness and that that's what's causing me to see things. I don't know. I'm just going to, I'm going to, I want to examine all alternatives. Uh, not only is Debbie and Tony's marriage suffering, but there is a child in this mix as well. Uh, we're going to talk about the impact there after the break. Much. How much does it take to disrupt your neurotransmitters? I don't know. Do you know? No, you don't. What you do know is you took street heroin. If my TV or my cell phone would glitch, my son would say it's the invisible people. My son has made mention of, oh, it's the invisible people. The other day I was sleeping on the couch and he had the television turned up, so I woke up and turned the television down with the remote control. He didn't know I did that, and I heard him say, oh, it must just be the invisible people doing that. My son's made mention that mom cleans all day. She's cleaning or she's taking her bath. Her behavior around him, my fear is he's picking up on it and he may start thinking that's normal. Now, uh, I, I mentioned Occam's razor saying the simplest explanation is often the best. And you seem to get immediately combative about, well, if you're just going to say it's mental illness, then why did you get defensive about that? Uh, no, I just wanted um, to get my point across that I'm not the only person that's seen it. Do you want this to go away? Absolutely. Because you said in the beginning that you were open-minded and would consider all alternative explanations. Mm -hmm. But then when, and you said, I hope this is a mental illness because no, then guess, that's something I could deal with. I can't deal right. with they because I don't know who they are. And if they don't exist and this is all coming from the inside mm -hmm. out, that would be great news. And when we, uh, and I haven't brought that up. I've talked about all the other possible alternatives. Mm -hmm. Now I've turned to this alternative and the second I turned to that, you got combative. No, I wasn't really like trying to argue with you. I'm just saying like, well, I'm playing That's payback. fine if it's a mental illness. I'm, I'm open to that. So does my niece have a mental illness? Maybe she does. I don't know. She isn't here. I said I didn't want to talk about her because she's not here. So that's what, that was my only point, I guess. There are also thousands and tens of thousands of people on the Internet that will say they've seen the same thing you've seen. Yeah. That doesn't mean they did. It just means they said they did. What is the most likely explanation? Is the most likely explanation that you disrupted your neurotransmitters by taking opioids, abusing opioids, doing heroin? I didn't do the heroin that much. It was mainly pills. That much? I tried it. How much is that much? How, how much does it take to disrupt your neurotransmitters? I don't know. Do you know? No, you don't. What you do know is you took street heroin. Yeah. In the last couple of years, you've been taking uh, fentramine on and off mm -hmm. for weight loss, mm -hmm. in addition to the Suboxone. Mm -hmm. So we know that we've got a lot of chemicals bouncing around in your brain, all of which have the side effects that are associated with exactly what you're describing. Okay. Now, what's most likely that taking Abusing opioids, doing heroin, being on Suboxone for four and a half years, and sprinkling fentramine in there every once in a while explains these experiences, or there's some larger than life conspiracy that has an unknown technology projecting holograms through your optic nerve. Well, obviously. What's most likely? Well, just, just well, theoretically. Well, most likely is, reality is the chemicals. Wouldn't you want to rule that out? Yeah, absolutely. Wouldn't it be amazing if, if we were able to wash your brain, your toxic brain, restore your neurotransmitters to normal, mm -hmm. 
and all of a sudden you went, holy <laughs> um, uh, so what's to be done here? Uh, I'll give you my thoughts after the break. Okay, here's, here's what I want to rule out. And you, you've been diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder, correct? And that is a chronic condition with symptoms of major mood episode, like major depression or manic concurrent with multiple elements of schizophrenia such as delusions, hallucinations, and disorganized speech, depression, mania, delusions. Now, it's possible that your thinking is delusional, that these things aren't really happening, you just believe that they are. Those are also side effects of some of the drugs that you're taking, and you can take drugs years ago that can have effects for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And there are different parts of the brain that are affected differently. This part, the nucleus that comes down here, is the pleasure center. When you look down here, this is your coordination. When you look here, uh, the frontal lobe is the executive functioning area. This is where you think. This is where you, this is your intellectual sense. This is where you reason. And what I want to do now is appeal to your logic, because I know you feel a certain way, but you also have something that tells me that you're not, in your terms, crazy. Mm -hmm. It tells me that you're not schizophrenic. Right. And that is, you have a very important thing called insight. Mm -hmm. Insight is very important. It is probably the number one factor that determines outcome for treatment. And insight is the ability to see and understand why you do the things you do. The ability to see oneself without distortion. So what I want to do is figure out what's really going on with your brain. Okay and see what chemically is, is happening with your brain. And I really believe that we're going to learn some things from that that are going to bring about some real treatment options. Here's what I want to do to start with. The first thing I want to do is have you evaluated really evaluated in a very comprehensive, thorough way. Okay. So I'm going to recommend that you go to the PNP Center in Dallas, Texas. Okay. Okay. Now, that's the Psychoneuroplasticity Center, and they work with the brain. They're going to look at you biochemically, hormonally, brain-wise, every way to get a baseline mm -hmm. and see what's going on. Okay. After you've been evaluated at PNP Center, I want to offer you the opportunity to go to Origins. Now, I consider Origins to be the nation's leading dual diagnosis treatment center, offering sophisticated programs specializing in the treatment of addiction, trauma, and other psychological disorders. And um, if that is not the case and it doesn't work and I'm still experiencing these things, then what? Well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay. Um, but um, I, I think the first thing to do is find out whether these experiences are coming from the inside out or the outside in. And since you don't know who they are and we do know who you are, then don't you think we should start with you? Yeah. Yeah, we should eliminate that. Yeah, because there's nothing to do with they, because we don't know who they right. are. So what are we going to do with them? Go out and look for them? Hell, I don't know where they are. <laughs> right. I do know where you are. So let's work together on this. Let's find out what we can find out and see if we can get you better. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to thank all of my guests today, and a special thanks to Frank Lawless and the PNP Center and Origins. Now, before we say goodbye... I want to remind you to subscribe to my new podcast, which launches tomorrow. It's called Fill in the Blanks. That's P-H-I-L in the Blanks.
<laughs> you can find more information about my podcast at drfillintheblanks.com or you can go to the podcast app on your smartphone, type in fill in the blanks and subscribe. Don't miss it. Every week a new and fascinating interview will be available, so subscribe everybody. We'll see you next time. Nope.